This is the big picture of the Christian life. External and continued sacrifice to the glory of God. This is the only logical response to the gospel. The Christian life is also fueled by internal transformation. And notice, look, look at the first part of verse 2. Do not be conformed to this world. That's a command, not a suggestion. Please don't forget. We can't forget. This is, these are marching orders. They're not suggestions of how life will go the best. The Lord Jesus is commanding me, commanding you, who he's bought with his own blood through the Apostle Paul, do not be conformed to this world. But, here's what it looks like, the opposite of being conformed to the world. But be, he's telling us to do something. Be transformed. How? By the renewal of your mind. Our mind is renewed and we see the mind of God and we have the mind of Christ as we read, feast upon, meditate on, and do the Word of God. You want your mind renewed? It's not just going to be meditating. You need to meditate on the truth of the Word. It's not just going to be by clearing your mind and getting out alone. And that can be very helpful. But if the Word of God is not instrumental in that, you won't be transformed. Your mind won't be renewed. If we are not constantly, daily, transformed by the renewal of our mind, then I'm afraid that we are constantly, daily, being conformed to this world, which is passing away with its evil desires. Friendship with the world is making yourself an enemy of God, so says the Apostle John. In the letter that we just studied through, the world is passing away. If you are not daily, constantly transformed by the renewal of your mind, then you are being conformed to the world. The Christian life is not one by which we, if we are passive, we drift towards holiness and towards faithfulness and towards joy and towards Jesus. The Christian life of following Jesus, putting our sin to death and obeying Him and loving others, being a sacrifice. It's one which takes serious concentration and every day renewing your mind. If you drift, if you're apathetic, you're going to drift away from Jesus. We don't drift towards, you know what, I haven't really been trying or thinking anything about it, but I have been super holy. You know that doesn't happen. You know if your mind's not renewed, you find yourself numb to the things that you know you shouldn't be numb towards. You find your heart cold to things that once even made your heart leap for joy. You hear preaching about the cross and you go, yeah, 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 instead of, man, thank you, Jesus. You sing words like Charles Wesley wrote, for what we have done, his blood must atone. The Father hath punished for us his dear Son. And with a cold heart that's conformed to the world, you just go, yeah, that is true. But I think with a mind renewed and transformed and a heart that's on fire for the gospel, you go, ooh, that is sweet. Thank God that he put forth his Son as a propitiation for our sins, that it was the will of the Lord to crush him for me. We will drift, and it will not be towards Jesus. Be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Have you had a busy week? Think back to the last busy week you had. Real busy. Just flooded with everything. Would you ever go from a Sunday to Sunday and get back on a Sunday morning with, with your brothers and sisters, and they're like, how was your week? It's like, man. I, it was just insanely chaotic. I felt like I was going 100 miles an hour the whole time. And what if they said, well, did you eat any food this week? And you went, no, I didn't even eat food. I didn't drink water. Why? Because I was too busy. It's like, we'd go, I think that's dumb. I think you should take time to eat food and drink water because all the more because you're busy, you need all the more to eat well and drink well. It's the same with us when we neglect the Word of God. When we neglect private prayer and communion, fellowship with God, we're like, I've just been so busy. It's like, all the more. 
that you need to stay up later or get up earlier or schedule your time better to be in the Word. All the more if you're busy, you need to be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Martin Luther used to say, I have so many things that I have to do today that I'm going to have to spend the first three hours of the day in prayer. <laughs> 